Okay, hi. Um, got a real nice treat for you today. We're doing a Rolex, but this is a vintage model. This is, reference number is the Rolex Submariner 1680, or this one is more commonly known as the Red Sub, due to the red writing, or it says Submariner there. Um, this was the first Submariner fitted with a date, a date wheel on there. Prior to that, the reference 5513 didn't have a date. Um, both are heavily collectible. Um, this one, I say, being a red Submariner is extremely collectible because um, back in the day when this was first released, uh, I believe it was around about 1969, the uh, Submariner came in both white and red variations. Um, and when Rolex would actually service the watch at a later stage, what they'd do, they decided they'd go with the white dial, the white writing for the Submariner. So they'd very kindly replace the dial for you, which was probably back in the day, um, really nice. You'd get your watch back from service, nice, fresh, clean dial on there, and you probably thought this is, um, you know, superb. So, um, basically, um, the red sub became harder and harder to find. And so the prices of these um, over the white variant, um, this one goes for around about 50 to 60% more. Um, I was lucky that I got mine six years ago and there wasn't quite the, um, they were nowhere near the price they are now. The price they are now is phenomenal. But um, I say I was lucky I got the box, the original box and everything for it here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have paperwork. Otherwise, I could put another probably 50% on top of the price of this watch if I'd have all the paperwork for it. It was serviced. And what was nice, it was an independent, very well respected one in the UK. And he even included all the old... Um, parts for it. You may say what's the point in having that and I know where you're coming from but from anyone who collects Rolexes or any watches for that matter all these bits are just nice. It's like buying a car which has got service history and someone's kept all the you know, receipts. It's a nice touch. Um, this one being a vintage model, what normally specifies when someone says is it vintage? Um, you can have a 90s watch and that's not vintage. What normally does it is the um, crystal. On the later watches, obviously you get um, sapphire, which is fantastic. Very hard to scratch, great stuff. Um, but this here has got the um, perspex or the acrylic. He is, and it's incredibly tall. Um, if you see from this, it is a really, it sticks out ever so much. Here's the one it replaced, which I had, well, which was replaced before I picked it up. And you can see how blooming um, tall that is. It really is tall. Um, I believe this is called the top hat one. So, put that away. And you look at the normal watch and you think it's not very tall, but then you realise there's about three millimetres of crystal actually still on on top of a watch air. So, and where the um, Cyclops is, you've got another couple of mil. So it's actually, it's almost 15 millimeters thick. Most people don't realize that when you talk about these old Submariners, but it hides its dimensions ever so well. It's only 39.5 across, um, and borderline, one of the best wearing Rolex there is. If I take this off, um, we're in SD 4K at the moment. So, if I put this on, you can see it, it looks spot on. Um, and you only really read from the bottom of the case to the top. You don't read all that back there and you don't really read the crystal because it's clear. I'll put some nice shots of the crystal because it, it, the distortion is fantastic off it. Um, this one here, say I was quite lucky it has the proper bracelet on it there were variations but this being an early one this one dates to around about 1973 74 try and get the zoom in again it doesn't want to know there we go 
So this one dates around about back then. And so it has the correct hollow link bracelet. Um, on the newer Rolexes, it's all solid links. This is a folded steel and hollow center links in between. And subsequently, sounds like a tambourine. Uh, so I know people always say they don't make them like they used to. But that's not always a good thing. Um, well, well, sorry, it's not always a bad thing. So this one here, the bracelet reference, and I, I'm going on a lot about references, but people into these kind of watches, it's all about originality. It's got to be original. So this one here has the hollow link, and it's 9315, which is correct for that time period. Um, and I'm quite lucky in that it also has the proper um, dive link extension, which sometimes got lost upon the way, and the correct clasp. It's everything about his watches is originality. It's really weird. And they don't want too polished and all that. This one has been polished, um, it looks like, but it's been done quite well. You still have all the beveling on all the edges here, and people like to see that. But hey, the watch is around about 45 to 46 years old and it's aged incredibly well. Um, it has lovely patina on the hands and dial. Um, you can see where these hour markers, um, they're actually gone a yellow and they match the hands also correctly. So there's the yellow one thing to look for sometimes is when you buy a vintage watch, has the dial, are the dial and hands original? And to be fair, let's face it, most of the time you can't. You know, it's going to be really hard to tell. These watches are blooming old. And I know people say, I'd never buy one without paperwork. But realistically, the person who first brought this in 73, most people probably couldn't afford this till they were in their 40s or 50s. And they're not alive anymore. You know, so paperwork goes missing, boxes go missing. Um, and too many people are like, oh, I need to have this, I need to have that. I see it on the forums all the time, and they're like, well, how can you not have the paperwork? And I think, do you have the paperwork to sync you brought 10 years ago? You know, all the boxes, not everyone does. And house moves, I don't know, divorce even, you know, someone dying, these things can all get mislaid. Um, but you know, you need to get the watch checked out, I fully agree. But that's a good indication to see if the hands and dial are around about the same age, in that the colouring of the hour markers should also match the hands. On this one, you can actually see tiny bits of oxidisation on the hands, which is uh, crazy, but it's actually a nice touch. Um, so, there you go. This one is also, um, has got a lovely ghost finish on the um, bezel. And that goes finish real, basically, it's just, this would have been black originally, but over time in UV light and things like that, it does um, slowly lose its color. That's why the modern ones are ceramic um, and they don't. So that's why it is. And one thing to note, this doesn't have a click. There's no ratchet in there and it's bi-directional, which is how they used to be. So it's just a friction fit. That's all it is on the bezel. Um, this one actually here, you can tell the bezel is of the correct age because of a fat font. And if you look very closely um, on the four, it has a small triangular um, ends to it, which, are, um, which means it should be correct. The dial on this one, because there's about six variations, I believe. There could even be one or two more. But this is a Mark III. Sorry, a Mark IV. It gets super complicated and you need to, um, you know, these are the things to actually find this out. You've got to look very closely. Basically, I know this isn't a Mark I to III because it has the feet first, not meters. So this was the first dial to feature feet first. And the difference why this isn't a Mark IV, it gets really technical, but basically where it says officially starts, end, sorry, before chronometer above it. It's, yeah, if the officially would to drag over a little bit further, then it would probably be a Mark, uh, Mark V, sorry. 
So there you go. It's it's very nerdy, but at the end of the day, just enjoy. But it's a, a red sub, or it's a vintage sub. It's got the hollow end links on this as well. Um, and I just, I love that. It sounds fantastic. The movement in this is the uh, 1575, which was taken over from the um, 5513, which had a 1570, and basically it just added a date complication. And I believe they made it a little bit more efficient. I think it's got four hours extra power reserve, 40. So this has 48 hours power reserve and nine, beats at 19,800, which is a strange number, but um, so it has a little bit more of a, um, a hacking movement. The actual watch, when you do wind it out, uh, when you do pull the crown out, does have a hacking um, second wheel, so a second hand, sorry, do excuse me. So that's nice. Um, the, the, and this really is a first world problem but it doesn't have a quick set date. So you may think that's no problem, but if you wear your watch every day, that isn't a problem. But if you're like me and you have a collection of watches and you wear it in rotation, when you come to set the, um, I don't know if you're, you're like me, but you like the date to be correct. Um, if the date isn't correct, it bugs me. Um, OCD, quite possibly. But to set the date, you've got to wind all the way through um, the days to get it to the right date and it's a pain really is again first world problem you know there you are you've got a vintage rolex and you're complaining about that i know but it's the way it is so there you go but it it truly is it's stunning it's one of these watches which is just for some people it is the grail one of their grail pieces they'd love to have it finishes off the collection really well and the good thing is i know people are going on about the Rolex bubble bursting and all that. Um, but you don't get that with vintage models. At the end of the day, vintage models are vintage. You can't go out and buy another one um, so easily. You can't go out and buy a new one. So that's the way it is. These are stunning. I've got a couple of different um, uh, straps or bracelets I wear it with. I do have this Jubilee. I'm not normally a Jubilee fan. Um, but on this vintage model, I'll drop a shot in now, and this looks fantastic on it. Um, alas, it isn't a genuine Rolex um, bracelet, but it does look very nice on there. And of course, you can't have a Submariner without having a black NATO strap. Um, so yeah, it also looks it also looks great on that. Um, what was that? Um, so nothing, but. Yeah, stunning watch, um, keeps amazingly good time in its age. Um, when, I first, when I first brought it and just been serviced, I think it was about one or two seconds a day. Um, and I haven't checked it recently, but yeah, two or three seconds a day. I don't leave it in a watch winder. I let my watches wind down. I just rotate the box every few days. And I try and wear my watches every... Um, you know, this watch I might only wear once or twice a month. Um, and you've always got to be careful because it is acrylic on there and you can scratch them very, very easily. But there again, you can also repolish these um, dials as well, the, the crystal. You can repolish it. So a little bit harder with this because it does have the sapphire, uh, sorry, it does have the um, cyclops on there, but it is doable. So it, it's not so hard. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. it. Apart from it is, it's stunning. It really does look good. When you compare it to say the later SD4K, um, you know, it's still got the essence of Rolex there. But I just think this style of case, and the SD4K isn't bad to be fair, the way it tapers into the bracelet, it's, it's just right. And I think, buying vintage Rolex, um, you can't go wrong really. They, they're stunning, they're timeless. Um, and, you know, as much as we don't like to go on about it, they are appreciated in price um, every day. Um, not so much, the newer models obviously go up, um, they shot up, now they're coming back down to a, a more respectable um, price. Let me just stop that. 
got that done. But the vintage models, because they are vintage, they're always going to um, still climb. Um, if you were to buy one, you have to do your research. Again, you're not so much buying a watch, but you're buying into the person selling it. So make sure you know who's selling it. Are they on the forums? Do they have a good reputation? Um, and it, like when I brought this five years ago, I or six years ago, I wasn't, um, I didn't know all the ins and outs of vintage models. And to be fair, I still don't. I, I know a fair bit, but not, you know, there's always people who know more than you. And I didn't know, is it a true red submariner? But there's no way of saying, was it definitely a red? Was it a white? Because they were made at the same time, so you didn't know. But yeah, so there you go anyway. That's uh, today's video. There you, there you go. That's the Rolex Red Submariner with Ghost Bezel. Okay, all the best. I'll see you on the next review. Bye.